Welcome to a new video of the visual brain. This time we will be talking about one of the most influential psychologists in the field of educational psychology, and this is David Paul Ossoe. Ossoe was an American psychologist born in New York on October 25, 1919, and he died in New York on July 9, 2008, at the age of 90. His most significant contributions were in the fields of educational psychology, cognitive psychology, learning, cognitive development, and investigating how our learning is organized and the significant advances in it. Meaningful Learning Theory Osubel considered that learning new knowledge is based on what is already known. This means that in order to learn, we create a kind of network of concepts in which we add new information and relate that information to what we already know. This is what we know as meaningful learning. But before delving into it, let's look at other important concepts in also a theory. Let's start by defining what learning means. Learning means acquiring information, retaining it, and retrieving it at some point. Another important point for Ausubel was that he considered that reception learning was more effective than discovery learning or road learning. Reception learning occurs when the teacher presents the students with the concepts already organized and digested. This type of learning can be meaningful. An example of this kind of learning can be this same video and other similar where the concepts are presented in a simplified way and not as they appear in the theories of the different authors. On the contrary, discovery learning implies that the student is responsible for digesting the material on its own. This type of learning can also be meaningful. Discovery learning is the most common in universities and teaching training courses, in which professors give long reading materials to students for them to read and select the most important information, which according to your ability to synthesize, can result in a few lines or in 90% of the sheet. Finally, road learning implies the memorization of information as it is presented with no need to make modifications or related to other information. This type of learning cannot be meaningful. We use this learning when we need to learn information that cannot be modified, such as phone numbers or dates. We can see an example of this in this scene of the Disney sitcom Hannah Montana, in which the protagonist must take an exam, but it is impossible for her to complete it since when she studied, she memorized the concepts using a dance routine that she must repeat in order to remember everything. But I'm not cheating. I know the answers. And I can prove it if I can move it. I suggest you move it down to the principal's office. <laughs> Everybody knows the bones just had to find a way. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. That's how I'll get an A. Stuart, I thought I told Just you. Give her a chance, please. <laughs> My body's many parts, and this is where it starts. But Lange's, I have ten, and metatarsals then. I got some tarsals too. I'll put them in my shoe. It is important to bear in mind that Osuvel clarifies that his theory applies only to the learning in the school environment. He did not say, however, that discovery learning does not work, but rather that it is not entirely effective. Now let's dig a little deeper into the concept of meaningful learning. Osuba's theory also focuses, as we have already said, on meaningful learning. According to his theory, to learn meaningfully, people must relate new knowledge to relevant concepts they already know. The new knowledge must interact with the knowledge that the person already possesses. Compared to rote learning, the latter can also incorporate new information into existing knowledge structure, 
but the new information does not interact with previous knowledge. Thanks to the relationship and links that occur between new and old knowledge during meaningful learning, the knowledge incorporated in this way is transferred to long-term memory. The most important element in meaningful learning is then how the new information is integrated into the knowledge structure over time. Accordingly, Osubes considers knowledge to be hierarchically organized, that each new information that we incorporate only becomes meaningful if it can be related in some way to what is already known. For meaningful learning to occur, certain conditions must be met, and those conditions have to do with the following three aspects. The first is the student's approach towards learning. This refers to the variables that influence the student to be willing to make the effort necessary to learn in a meaningful way. For example, in the 2011 movie Beyond the Blackboard, a novice teacher tries to teach a group of children from a poor school on the outskirts of the city and quickly realizes that the deplorable school context, the diverse family problems and the disruptive behaviors among peers interferes with their ability to learn. then tries to at least create a pleasant and playful environment to teach her classes, transforming and decorating her classroom so that this is a more welcoming place where the teaching learning process can take place. What do you think? Awesome. This is to post all of the good work that The second point that must be met is logical significance. This means that the information that is presented must not be arbitrary or confusing. It must be offered in a clear and organized way following a logical and coherent sequence. For example, in this scene from the 2011 movie Bad Teacher, the teacher tries to get the student to answer questions about a book that she had not even asked them to read before. Bring your To Kill a Mockingbird to page one. Good. Now, who can tell me why Jem cries when the hole in the tree is filled with cement? Now, who has the answer to my question? Nobody's read this book? It's on the syllabus. Well, you never assigned it to us. Well, now I am. And we have a quiz tomorrow. What? what? On the first hundred pages. Oh, Finally, we have psychological significance. This occurs when the contents are appropriate to the level of cognitive development, the previous knowledge that the student has, and, in addition, responds to their interest. In the 1993 film, Matilda, we can see a clear example of psychological significance, when the teacher Honey decides to review the previous contents that she had worked until then so Matilda, who has just joined her class, could catch up. The teacher begins to review the multiplication tables, more specifically the table of two with the class, and there we can see that all students respond actively and are ready to advance to the next level, in this case the tables of three. All right, we've been working on our two times tables. Would anyone like to demonstrate? <laughs> okay, let's do some together. Two times four is? Eight. Two times six is? Twelve. Two times nine is? Eighteen. Excellent. You've been practicing. Pretty soon you'll be able to do any multiplication. Whether it's Another point to keep in mind is that Osuba distinguishes between three types of meaningful learning. Concept formation, which involves retaining the names of words and other symbols and associating them with what they represent. 
When one learns a word, it is meaningless without knowing what it represents, since it could have been called otherwise. Concept formation is assigning a symbol to an idea. For example, seeing a cat and knowing it's called cat. On the other hand, we have concept assimilation. The experience will indicate, for example, that all quadruped animals that meow identify with the word cat. And then, when it has been learned, it will not be necessary to see a cat to understand what is being talked about when someone mentions that concept. In this case, a concept has been learned, which is the generalization of a representation and allows the cat concepts to be attributed to all members of the species. It also applies to the understanding of abstract concepts such as government, country, and mammal. The third kind of meaningful learning is propositional learning, where the words combine to form new ideas in the form of sentences, which have a different meaning than the sum of the words it contains. To meaningfully understand a proposition, we must first know the meaning of each concept that makes it up, and then the meaning of the whole sentence, which may have a different meaning. An example of this can be seen in people learning other languages. They at first might find it difficult to understand expressions and idioms, whose meaning are not literal. As for example, in the phrase, the cat is out of the bag, to understand what it really means, it is not enough to just understand each word separately. Finally, we have one last important concept in also a theory that we should talk about, and it is the advanced organizers. Advanced organizers are introductory and contextual materials or information that is presented before the lesson, class, or reading material. It is innate for the student to create a link between the prior knowledge and the new information they receive. Osubel divides advanced organizers into two categories, comparative and expositive. The comparative organizers. They occur when the teacher, through various stages, try to make the students bring to their minds concepts and ideas they already know, and that will be relevant to the new content they are going to learn. In this scene from the 2001 movie Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, we see how the teacher first reviews one of the movements learned in a previous class using a rhyme, and then he teaches them the spell they must combine with that one movement to perform a levitation. Don't forget the nice wrist movement we've been practicing. Mm. The swish and flick. Everyone? The swish and flick. Good. Oh, and enunciate. Wingardium Leviosa. Off you go then. Wingardium Leviosa. Wingardium Leviosa. Wingardium Leviosa. Stop, stop, stop. You're going to take someone's eye out. The expositive organizers. They are used when the new learning content is unfamiliar to the students. Then the teacher will try to simplify as much as possible the new ideas necessary to understand all the new information that will be studied later. An example of this can be seen once again in the movie Bad Teacher, in a scene where a teacher tries to teach a new subject in a social science class, announcing in a very didactic and simple way the new content that will be learned in that class. Welcome to Air 7th Grade Social Studies. I'll be your captain, Miss Squirrel. Cruising altitude for the year will be world geography through current events. We may have a layover in civics, so buckle up because it's going to be a crazy ride. Now that we have already seen the main ideas of our super theory, the only thing left to add is that his theory is commonly associated with innovative methodologies that emphasize student activities as discovery learning 
or that which is made taking into account the children's interest. We must not forget, however, that various methodologies can favor meaningful learning if they take into account the conditions that determine it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have found it useful. Please do not forget to leave a thumbs up if it was so, and also leave a comment with your opinion on the subject and what you can contribute. Finally, do not forget to share it and subscribe for more educational videos so we can continue learning together. See you in the next video.